This is how to make your own slippers with a two-piece pattern, first starting with the sole and then the tops, sides, and backs. Um, I'm going to show you the process I went through to make this pattern. I'll give you the pattern down in the description and then I'll show you the construction of it. And I actually use hot glue. It can't be simpler. You just glue it together. Um, so let me show you how to make it. Well, I realize this might be a bit of a long video, so if you want to just see the actual uh, slipper making and construction, you can skip ahead. I'll put a time for it. But in the beginning, I want to talk about how I came up with the pattern, why I'm building the one I did, and everything involved. Um, so I needed new slippers for the basement. I'm always walking around here in the shop and you can see, you know, these are worn out. They're good, but they're all ripped up. So I went on Amazon to buy replacement slippers and they wanted 60 to $80 and I thought that was ridiculous. So um, I thought I could make my own. And the ones that really caught my eye were ones that were made out of wool and they're wet felted. And the way that works is you have a pattern and you lay raw wool on it, you wet it down and the wool binds with itself, kind of like dreadlocks in human hair. The wool binds with itself and you can shape it. And there's tons of video making wool uh, slippers and boots. And actually I learned that uh, Russia in World War II, they said they attribute to winning the war because of these Veliki wool boots they had that kept them uh, incredibly warm. Um, then I found that wool was expensive. You can get a pound of wool on Amazon for 30 bucks and you need two pounds to make the slipper. So I'm like, well, I'm spending 60 bucks and I gotta make them myself. So that was out of the question. The next thing that caught my eye was something called lasso slippers. And I made a pair, they look like this. And the cool thing is they're made of one piece. They're a one piece slipper, there's holes in them and you just lasso them together with rope. You tie them up and they're a one piece slipper. You can build it yourself. Um, there wasn't a lot of patterns for that. There, there was pictures. And there were some people that made their own patterns, but I stitched a lot of them together. Here's what the pattern looks like. Here's another pattern. I made this pattern based on the picture on the website. And this was a, a compilation of some other patterns. So I have patterns for those and I'll put them down, a link for the patterns down in the description. Um, my shoe size is 11 and I'll put the uh, pictures with a measuring tape so you can scale it. But these were okay, they didn't look really great. Um, I even made one for my son and they, they didn't work really great. Uh, the material I'm using is not uh, wool, it's felt. It's carpet padding that's felt. It's not the typical carpet padding that's foam. This is uh, strong and I've used it for a ton of projects in our house. I've used it for insulation. I wrapped our hot water tank. I used it to uh, uh, seal our garage door so it's strong, it's robust, it holds its shape. Um, it's not too coarse, although I lined my final slippers, I lined them with a softer material. But this is great material, it was free, so it's not costing me anything. Um, but I wanted to make a slipper that kind of looked like that wet felted slipper. So I checked online and you'd think there would be tons of patterns. I mean, this is the internet, you'd think there'd be tons of patterns for slippers. And in fact, there wasn't. There was only a couple and they were terrible. Um, if you look, you'll see this pattern and this pattern. This is it. You're like, this is not what I want. So there was hardly any patterns for slippers. So I ended up having to make my own patterns. I had this and I had this and this and I made a ton of patterns to try to get the look I wanted. And this was the first slipper I made. It was not at all good looking, but it fit and it kind of got me on the right track. It's two piece. There's a sole and a top. The top sort of looks vaguely like this. Um, and I actually sewed this together. And then I realized later on, wait, may, let me try the hot glue gun. And in fact, the hot glue gun worked so much better. It was stronger and it went quicker. So all future ones I built, I used a hot glue gun. Um, this was the next one I made. Again, it was a little better. I cut uh, relief slots in the side, kind of like the wet felted slippers I liked that you could buy online for 80 bucks. But this was a little bit closer. The back was a little bit rough and I didn't really like this pointy shape, but that was a little bit closer. Again, two piece, the sole, and the pattern for the sole is really easy. You just trace your foot, add a quarter of an inch on all sides, and quarter inch on the front, quarter inch on the back. So a half, total, a half an inch on the front and back, and a quarter inch on the sides. That's how you get the bottom. The top is another story. We'll talk about that. Um, the next pattern I made were these, and these were, are wearable, they're pretty good. I actually lined these with a cloth so they're a lot softer. I doubled up the sole so there's double, there's two layers of this felt on the bottom. Um, they're really warm and they have a better shape to them, kind of 
the shape I was looking for. They hold on your foot. So I was getting there, but I'm ready to make the final pair. And so for those, I've cut out these patterns. So this is what I'm gonna make my final pair out of. Um, I've traced them all out. I've traced the inner liner. So here is the shape of the final pattern. I want it to be not so steep in the front, um, so I had to add an extra, a little bit of extra material. It connects in the back with hot glue and it glues all the way around the soles. Um, but I put some extra material in the front for your toes so it'll, it'll uh, create the look I wanted. And then to get from that vertical curve to around your uh, ankle, I increase the thickness here on this side. So this will be your ankle height on this side and this will be everything in front of your foot. So these are some of my working early patterns that I used. And again, after I used the first couple paper patterns, I just used these. This is an early one. I ended up going to this, then this. This was an early one. The last two are these right here. This is the lasso pattern that I used. These can all be forgotten because these are the final patterns right here. So again, how to do your feet, you just trace trace your feet out and then just uh, add a quarter of an inch on each side and then you can go a little bit further on the toe and a little bit more on the heel. But here's the patterns I have and again, all the felt and then the cloth also. And then these are the slipper sides and backs and toes. So that is the final pattern that I'm happy with. I was thinking of lining it with wool. I actually bought this blanket uh, at Salvation Army. It was three bucks and it's a wool blanket. And I was thinking I could line it, but after wearing these, if I put wool on the inside, they'd be incredibly hot. So just going with the felt and the cloth liner is enough for me. So I have my sides and I have my soles and I'm ready to make them. Okay, I've been working my way around here and I uh, try not to burn my fingers as I go. Um, a couple things, if there is a gap you can just go back in, put some more glue in right there, 
and push it together so that's not a big deal if you miss a spot and you just hold it there but one thing I did have to do is you could see it, the, the sides just match up well I actually had to cut some material away the heels were a little bit longer and when I tried to butt the sides in they didn't match up they were too short and I checked it on my foot and it was going to be okay so I cut this little sliver crescent off the back so that the backs line up Okay, the uh, slipper's all done, and you can see the front's the hard spot, and you kind of just got to get it on there. But once you get going, the back matches up a lot better. You can see I did a lot better on this back side. And then here you just pinch it together. Ideally, this would be flat, but it's hard to do without burning yourself, so it kind of bows out a little. Then I could put a little more in that corner. Um, but next, I want to make this little cutout here because it's a little too tight fit in my foot to fit in so I'm going to add this little cutout to match that there we go I can just uh, tack down some of this stuff on the inside and kind of shape it get in there and squeeze and lift up and make sure your toe fits and it's pretty durable once that hot, uh, hot glue sets you're not gonna mess with it so kind of lift up at the toe shape this side and kind of shape it the way you want I like it high up in the front and then more like that there so this is the second slipper and I think I have the technique a little better you can see the bottom of this one's a lot cleaner um, it's better to do it on the side that way you can get some downward pressure on the whole side as you do it And when you flip it over there's still pressure on the bottom and I did have to trim the back off this one as well so that this uh, matches up otherwise it wouldn't have fit and another thing is I've been turning the uh, hot glue gun off and on to keep the temperature down a little more but basically I'm just putting glue on the side and another thing it's uh, to double up on the bottom gives me more gluing surface here if I only had one layer on the bottom I wouldn't have as much to glue to put together and I've been using this wire brush to kinda of get all the fibers kinda of mixed in and that really glues it together well Well, here's the finished product. Um, the whole process maybe took about an hour at the most. The hard part was the days developing the pattern. And the second one I did uh, took half the time and turned out twice as good as always the case with these things. The first one I was kind of finding my way. The second one I had it where I was flipping it over back and forth, back and forth. Um, I know they're not the most stylish thing in the world. Nobody I've shown them to has liked them. Um, same with these one I made before these. I put the fuzzy side on the outside. These are a little smaller and tighter and more to my foot and I put the uh, fuzzier side on the inside. But they were free. Um, I made them in the style that I wanted to, kind of like the wool ones I saw online for 80 bucks. Uh, a couple things to note, I did go through about 10 uh, glue sticks when doing these. So they do use a lot of glue and um, I used this silicone mat that I have. And this worked great because any hot glue just peeled right up. You can see on this table, the first one, I didn't use it, and this hot glue stuck to it, and I can't get it off. Um, so, if you're looking for some slipper patterns online, I know there isn't many out there. This is the basic shape. This will get you started, hopefully, um, for a two-piece slipper, a sole and a back, seam down the back. So you don't have to make them like this, but you can use my pattern, and uh, use my dimensions, and I uh, hope you like them. Thanks. Well, I hope you liked the video you just watched. If you did, feel free to subscribe by clicking the button on this side. You can also check out all the videos I've done, um, the playlist from things I've built, things I've fixed, 
home repair, 3D printing, and on this side you can check out a recommended video similar to the one you just watched. And as always, down in the description, I'll put a link to my blog which has more pictures and more information about the video you just watched. Thanks.